Just caught me here. I'm um, just putting up some some shelves, some racking. <clears throat> putting up some racking shelves, you know, for ah, some racking shelves to put. Put these wear boards, you see, so I can put lots of wear boards on the wall because, because I like to have lots of lots of places to put the pots that I make. worse isn't there than making pots and you don't have anything any place to put them and uh, so basically I in fact I had to get busy doing a bit of carpentry and I put up this this is a stud wall here and I had OSB board here and um, we've um, painted it now and I've got my brackets I've got a load of a load of these brackets you see I find these are the best the best brackets to use you know this, this type and uh, So, let's just get this uh, vertical. Yeah, I was actually, I was actually in two minds whether to just attach the brackets, you see, with, with the screws um, directly to the wall. which I could have done, but you know the, the OSB board is a bit not very strong, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I like the idea better of attaching a baton and then attaching the brackets onto the, onto the piece of baton. So that's what I did. And, um, Yeah, we've got a, a workshop coming up here, you see, at the end of this month. So I decided to make the workshop, the studio, a bit smaller than what I originally had. Because this is really, this is really a three bay garage. So I really actually wanted to only use two bays of the garage. And so I put this wall up and I thought that would be good as well because it gives me then 
place to put these shelf brackets, you see. Yeah. So, that's what's going on today. Um, yeah, these are very cheap, these little brackets. They're like 50 cents each, you see. And you can put them like that, attached to the wall with a short end, or you can attach them like that with a longer piece. Well, see, my wear boards are 8 inches. So that, that fits nicely. The other one, a bit, a bit mean, you know, not really long enough. So I'm going to put them on like that. And we'll just, they're very easy to do. You just, you just put, decide where you want to have them, you see. Like you have one there. And you have another one here. And approximately, you know, I have like about six going all the way down to here, you see. And um, so what I usually do is I just put them all on one side first, where I want them, at the right height. And then um, I put a level across onto the bracket and put the bracket on this side, get it level and mark it and then screw the one on this side. I know it's pretty basic and pretty pretty obvious maybe, but you know, we're all at different levels, aren't we, aren't we, of carpentry and doing that kind of thing. And for somebody maybe putting shelves on the wall is a bit daunting. Well it it, it this is just to show you how easy it is. And you know, it's really important, I think, as a, as a potter to use wear boards. I, um, I have a load of them and I, I'm all the time getting more made up. As you can see, this is the, the, the garage. Over there, you see, I've got more um, bit dark over there but you can see you see that I've got pots over there on the on the shelves so you you really want to have um, and I go down to you know your local carpentry supplier wherever that happens to be and um, these are these are I think they're half inch, half inch ply, plywood, and um, four, four feet long, four feet long, and eight by eight inches wide. And I find that is a, is a good size. You can carry it like over your shoulder like this. Um, you can you can lift it and put it in the racking. You see. You can you can put a, a board of a board of pots like these like these pictures you see um, it helps you to see your pots after you've made them you can you can you look down the board and you can see what you've accomplished and. You know, if you're working to a gauge, for example, if you're making pots according to a gauge, to a set size, you know, when you put them on a board like that, you look down the board, you, you soon see, you know, how, how well you've been, how, how consistent you are being. And that, that can encourage you a lot and, and can motivate you. And, um, yeah, so... Do it, <laughs> but uh, one thing to do is 
When you get these, you get them cut, you see. When you get them home, the first thing you really need to do is get a bit of sandpaper and sandpaper these so that, you know, you've got, because you don't, well, you don't want to get any splinters off the edges of these. Um, so, that's it, folks. That's it, wearboards. And um, let's swing the camera around again. As you can see, I'm in a state of total chaos here. This has all got to change by the 26th and 27th of this month because we have a workshop, we have people coming. And um, the weather, though, has been such a... This winter, hasn't it? Been, been a bit discouraging, hasn't it, the weather? But... But we are not discouraged <laughs> and we are going to continue practicing now that the better weather has come we'll feel more motivated get out into our studios we're going to get them swept we're going to get to put things in order do you feel like that you feel like you want to get out there and put things in order and set things straight and get your wheel cleaned out from the last time you used it probably two or three months ago and etc anyway um this uh, as i said over, over the course of the next six months we have got here i am running here workshops quite a lot of workshops so if that's something that interests you and you want to um learn more about repeat throwing working to a gauge, maybe overcoming some of the little niggling things that you haven't been able to move beyond or that have been holding you back. Um, maybe a workshop would be something that would inspire you and help you. Um, so if you go to my website, simonleachpottery.com, uh, you can see there all the workshops that we've got coming up now, beginning at the end of this month into May, June, July, August, possibly into September as well. And uh, please go there, check them out, and, um, and, uh, and see other things that we've got there on our website. I do have, um, I'm going to be having some more leech, leech treadle wheels made and um, you're familiar with the leech treadle wheel I know um, like that one there um, they're very well made by my Amish carpenter out of cherry uh, maple and walnut and uh, with a stainless steel tray um, in the the slots tray you know the lining is is stainless steel inside here this is my this is my one which is well well dirty and well used as you can see um, so we, I'm going to be getting some more of these made now I have actually been having these made up as kits but I'm finding that people are reluctant to when I quote them the shipping costs that they're reluctant to go ahead so what I'm doing is, I think what we're going to do is, I'm going to make up, I have to get up made uh, five at a time. My carpenter won't make less than five at a time. So we're going to get five made up and um, they will be completely finished. There won't be anything to do to them. Um, they'll be all varnished and smooth and beautiful. So, but, but... The, un the, the thing is, they will only be for pickup only, which I know is going to be inconvenient for um, for those who who want one and uh, want me to send them one. But it's just been, you know, it's just been the cost of the shipping, and of course, you know, they, we have to get them crated up as well. So I'm going to now just get another five made, I think. But they will be completely 100% finished wheels for pickup only. So, so that's that. Um, anyway, 
if one of those interests you, they're actually very good wheels for, I think, for production throwing. If you want to make really huge pieces of work, probably I wouldn't recommend that you get one. Because you, when you're making a really big pot, you really want to be starting lower down, don't you? You want the wheel lower, so you can po possibly stand beside the clay and pull the clay up ne standing next to the wheel. This is not a wheel that is really for, for that. This is a wheel probably good for making up to about 10 pounds of clay. Uh, if you want to throw more than 10 pounds of clay, well, get an electric wheel. Um, electric wheels have their uses. And uh, it's just that, you know, when you've got to kick it yourself, as well as do the throwing, uh, there's a limit to how, 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 big you, how big you can get it, you see, because of the length of your arm, you see. What we can do, and what we do do though, if we want to make a bigger pot, we can make it in sections, you see, and then join one section onto the next. That is a way of doing it. Um, but, as I said, these wheels really are very good for smaller work, up to, up to £10, £5, £3, £2, £1, you know, for making a lot of very repeatable, repeat thrown items like mugs, tankards, pitchers, bowls, plates, all of that sort of stuff. And for that, I think they're the best, quite honestly. Um, yeah, so I'll leave you with that thought. And uh, if you're interested in a, one of these wheels, then get in touch with me. I've, get, I've got some people that are interested and uh, we'll, we can get on and get some I'm going to put in an order with my carpenter. We're going to get get another five made. You know. Whether they whether I've got customers or not, I'm just going to get them made because they're just, they're such beautiful wheels. I just like looking at them, you know. <laughs> just like having them around. They are like heirloom pieces, you know. It's almost a pity to to put clay on them. Sometimes I think. Anyway, that's it, folks, for today. I'm going to continue now. Put up the rest of these shelves. Attach all the little um, uh, shelves, brackets, uh, so I can um, we can get on and get this work, these workshops underway. So, good luck with your spring cleaning. Good good luck with your your cleaning out your own pottery studios ready for this season. Hey, let's all keep practicing. See you soon. Take care. Adios.